Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Um, thank you very much for tuning in, as always, and I hope you are all well, as always. Um, okay, so this is the part three, the final part of the um, commission that I'm doing at the moment. Um, it's, uh, I think in uh, part one, uh, I did the, the, the ground floor, then the started the stairs in the hallway going up to the next floor. In part two that's just been on, I did the middle floor and the top floor. So the middle floor had the bathroom with the tiled walls, uh, the middle staircase landing and the uh, child's bedroom. And up on the top floor, I finished the top of the staircase in the hallway with the main bedroom on the right and the sewing room on the left. And I left off that video um, by saying that I just had some lights to put in in the in the uh, attic rooms um, in the ceilings. Um, so I'll do that in this video and complete the house in this video. So that will involve um, papering the outside of the house, uh, the roof at the front, um, and also doing all the wiring at the back. So a lot of people did comment asking about different ways of wiring. There are, there are many different ways of wiring your house. So there's no point in talking about all the different ones because that just gets confusing. Well, it does me anyway. I like to just hear one thing and uh, that's it. So I'm just going to talk during the video about how I'm wiring this house. Uh, sorry, well, not this house <laughs> or that house. But the house that you can't see yet. <laughs> um, but I will be wiring this in the copper tape uh, method, um, which is what the customer uh, liked and, and wanted done. So I will be doing that for this one. So if anyone's interested in one method of wiring your house, then watch on. <laughs> um, but as I said, there will be other methods. I think in the, I did mention, which is very exciting, the, the big commission that I'm getting um very 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 soon uh, we're just organizing transport uh, to bring the house to me uh, ashcroft hall can't wait um and already uh, there are bits and pieces uh, papers and things um les chinoiseries paper from spain um they're absolutely stunning gorgeous i cannot wait to get hold of this house um, as I cannot wait to get hold of any of the houses I get. I absolutely love each one. Each one is a different journey on its own, which makes that house special, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, so, uh, yes, so that one will be coming very soon. And that one, I think we may be doing a different uh, method of wiring the lights at the back. Um, it's much bigger lights, many more lights. So I'm, I'm not sure, we haven't decided yet, but we may be doing a different method with that. So you might be interested in that. Those videos, they will be done in several parts. The house is going to take quite a long time to do, but it will be a fun journey, uh, never, nevertheless. Um, so anyway, I shall get on with this house now and uh, show you where I'm up to and uh, we'll continue from there. Hurrah. <laughs> okay, now, so I've put the ceiling lights in the uh, attic rooms, or the top rooms, and I've Done the same as I've done with all the um, floors to the other lights. I've routed a, a line out here and out the back, laid the cable and taped it down. I'm going to paint over the top of the house just a dark grey um, so it will match up with the front uh, of the roof. Um, so the back here is all the lights from all the rooms just coming out. So. Um, I'll paint the roof bit and then I'll start and I'll show you how I lay the uh, copper tape down. Right, okay folks, um, so what you do when you, uh, you're working out where you want the copper tape to go and you've got lights coming out everywhere, just really look to see where they're all coming out and see if you can start making uh, lines anywhere along near those wires that are coming out. Um, so you, you could do lots of copper tape coming off main pieces um, going to all different lights but you really have to try and make it as simple as possible and then there's less connections uh, for the, for the uh, copper wire to be fixed to the, uh, to the house. So I've checked with the, the client and she wants to start the copper tape from here on this side of the house. Um, so that's going to be wired in here to the mains so we can just plug it in and the plug is on this side of, of her house. So the copper tape will go from there. So what I've done 
because of the way the, the wires come out of this house. I've done the copper tape from here straight along the bottom there just a couple of inches up and that will connect these two wires at the bottom here. That's all that's for that bit. Then from there I'm going to keep it, you have to keep it all joined to keep it all working. I'm going straight up the side here. Nice and simple. So along the bottom, straight up the side. And then from this long bit here, I'm going to do one line across the top to get these wires, one line to a third down to get these ones, these lights, and another one along here to get these lights, these, 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 and these two will all go in there. So it's a very simple layout. Some houses are more complicated depending if where the, the lights are. Um, but this one's very easy. So I'll get the top, I'll get the copper tape out, solder and iron, we'll get that heated up, um, and then I'll show you how I uh, join the, the, the wires together. Um, okay, so the, the copper wire, before you put this down, or the copper tape, you can either buy it already on a sticky strip, um, because we want two parallel lines um, throughout, so we can attach one wire to one and one to the other. So that's quite quick and easy just to peel off and stick on um, to get where you want to go. Um, or there's the single copper wire tape and you just peel that uh, the sticky backing off of it and stick it straight on. Um, I just prefer to use this. It means you have to be careful not to touch the, 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 the tracks and just keep them separate. Um, but just put them fairly close together um, they can be about a centimetre apart, it doesn't really matter, as long as you can get the two uh, terminals to each uh, wire um, on, the, on each uh, copper tape. And then just peel it back and just stick the first bit on. And just sort of go over the first, go over your pencil marks that you made first of all, um, if they look straight to start with, and then you can just follow them. So that's just peeling it off. And it's quite easy then just to put the first the first copper line down and then when you've done that you can then cut the copper and then stick another one um, parallel with it as I said just a small distance apart from each other um, so I'll get these laid down <coughs> and then I want to show you uh, what happens if you need to cross the <coughs> excuse me if you need to cross the, the paths of the copper wire I'll show you what to do then Okay, so I've laid the, the, the two strips along the bottom there. Um, and what I did, I forgot to do it on camera, but I'll, uh, I shall do some more as we go along. Um, so I now want two lines coming up from here. Um, one of the lines, the bottom line, is going to cross over the top line of copper. So on that one, I need to insulate this so the copper goes over the top of it. Um, but I'm going to put the first one on, which is coming off this top line, straight up, first of all. So what I did was just put some solder on there. I, I did already do it, but I'll just put a little bit, little bit more on. There we are. So it's just got a blob of solder there. Um, that caught, it, Obviously, this is very hot. Don't play around with them when they're switched on, but that does cool off extremely quick once it's actually the solder is actually uh, away from the iron it just uh, cools down it's very very quickly um, so so I've put a blob of co uh, solder on there then I get my other copper strip and apply that straight on top of it going up the side of the doll's house I'll just get, carefully get this in line Like so. So it's only touching the top one, it's not, not touching this bottom one. So I've got an L shape there basically. And then all I'll do is just carry on, peel this off, and keep it keep it going as straight as possible, really. All the way up. So it's stuck off. down nice and uh, nice and firm. And then what I do is Go over the top of that join now where the two are joining with a bit more solder and just solder the two one on top of each other like so hopefully you can hopefully you can see that okay so I've just did a big blob of solder over the two and that heats the one underneath and the and the solder on top so they're well and truly connected now 
Um, so I'll just pause the camera for a minute and I'll get another piece of tape and uh, to go up beside this one and I'll show you how you cross over them. Okay, so I'm just using a piece of um, black insulation tape. You could use a couple of layers of masking tape, <coughs> just something that uh, is nice and thick. Um, so it will insulate the copper wire and I'm going to, I'll just put it in place, sorry my hand in the way, but let me just put it in place to show you where it's going. So hopefully if I move this round, I can't really see the camera properly, sorry folks. Um, but hopefully you can see that the top wire, the top strip there is connected. The bottom strip is still unconnected to anything else, but I want to go from there up. So I'm going to cross over on over this black bit of tape and then carry on up the wall. So when that when this wire uh, copper wire goes up, it's not touching these two anywhere. So it's going straight over the top, and that will uh, stop the connections. One, if they connect, then it will just blow the lights basically. So now on the bottom piece of copper there, I need a bit of uh, solder first of all. I'll just put that on, connect it, let go. And that gives a nice blob of solder there at the bottom. And then I can stick, let me put this in here. I can then unpeel this piece of uh, copper strip and put it directly onto where I've just soldered, on the, over the top of it over the insulation tape, if you can see that, and then carry on straight up, so it's up level with the, the, the copper tape that's already there. And once I've stuck that on, then we'll put a bit more solder and solder over that. Okay, so we have our two lines going across the bottom, the two lines going up across the side of the house, um, up uh, to the top, and now we're going to do the lines going off of this side line here. So I'll start with this one first of all. Um, all you need to remember is, as you work your way round, always keep from, uh, always keep on the same side, whichever side the copper wire is, keep it on that side all the time. Um, if you cross over at some point, then they're not making a clear connection. But what you want is just, if you imagine these two lines just as one single line, you want that one single line, you want to be able to follow it all the way along without breaking off or without touching the other copper wire. And then the second copper wire is on its own the whole time. So at this point now, the outside one, this this was the inside one that was being crossed over to start with, but now we're going this way, it's this outside one that we're going to cross over this one. So then you want to put insulation tape on this one to cover over that one. So they're always the same. It's like you're going round like that with your fingers in straight lines, but you're you're never crossing over and starting again. So I'll just put some solder. I'll just put a, <coughs> a couple of blobs of solder, one higher than the other, because we want to cross over um, parallel, one below the other. There's one there, and one a bit lower. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you get your insulation tape whichever thick sticky tape you want to use and just cut a piece <coughs> excuse me um as i said now this wire this copper is going to cover over this one so it's this one that you want to cover up like so hopefully that shows the copy of this one and now i can put copper tape from there straight over and along and this one just goes from that line straight over. Um, so I'll just stick these on, put the solder on those two joins and join those up and carry on really and do the whole thing. Um, and then I'll show you how to fix the wires to the copper strips. Okay, so that's the layout, quite simple. But now the copper strips are stuck on, you can see more or less where the wires are going to go into the, uh, into the copper strip and then one at the top there. So, and if I just show you um, where they come from originally, the, the two, I've just done them exactly the same 
way of uh, going off, each branch going off exactly the same. So basically think of it as like a, a tree with branches. You don't have to join the branches up when they go off. They can just finish wherever. Uh, you just do them as long as you need to uh, to reach the wires that you want to connect. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, what I always do, is to just, once I've laid the plan out like this, um, I want to make sure it's working. Um, I'm not going to connect all the wires and then switch it on and see what happens. Uh, what I do is just start somewhere. I'll start down here at the bottom and I will connect this wire to the copper strip, switch it on at the power and then uh, and then see if that light is working. And then I'll just gradually add one at a time and then switch it back on and check that the, the lights are coming on. And then if one doesn't work at some point, you know it's just that that is the problem. Because otherwise it's quite difficult to find out where the problem lies if this light's not working. Um, and also, uh, I'll just get a connection to, to show you. Now, um, just for the uh, actual connection to the uh, to the mains on this house in particular, um, all I'm going to do is use the, um, the transformer um, that you would plug into the mains and the two wires that come out of the transformer, I'm just going to solder one on each of the ends of the copper so they're connected to the whole layout. Um, I'm only doing that because the lady that's having this house uh, doesn't want anything sticking out the back of the house because she wants to push the house right up against a wall. So this is the connector. This is a one that John Boy's taken off of his old house, so it's it's got paint on it. Um, but this is the, the connectors usually that you would screw on to the to the, con uh, the the house, and all you do is make sure that these wires are wide enough that you can that one can rest on there and one can rest on there. So when you put them on like so. Uh, the copper is connected to the two uh, two junctions, and then you've got your red and the black. The cables on these, uh, the lights on these houses, um, it doesn't matter which one goes into what, um, but you would just press that, push the wire, the, the bared wire in there, and let go. And that just keeps the wires fixed there, and then you would use the transformer to plug that in. But I'm actually going to weld the uh, con the transformer straight to the copper so that it's nice and flat and, uh, in, the, in the wall. Um, okay I was going to do the one on the bottom uh, area first that I showed you but I couldn't get the um, tripod down level with the, the worktop so it was a bit awkward filming so I'm just going to do this one here it doesn't matter where you start really. Um, so to join the wire I've taken one of them out of the way because two wires came out of the same hole but just imagine that's um, just one wire coming out. So I split it in two, bared the wires on the ends and twisted the, the copper ends just so it got a nice, uh, uh, you know, not, it was easy then to, to solder onto the copper tape. And first of all, just with that out of the way, I'm just going to put two blobs, as I did with the joins, I'm just going to put two blobs of solder onto the copper tape, first of all, like so. So there on there so they're now, they're now cold that's how quick it goes and then uh, sorry my hands might be in the way but I then just offer one of the wires up to the up to the copper tape just lay it on the, the solder and then just touch it with the soldering iron and let go and then I don't know if you can see it properly in the camera but that now has uh, fixed to the wire there fixed to the copper and then just with the other one do the same thing again and just touch it on the solder and let it go and then let go so that's now fixed to the to the copper tape after you've done this if there's if the leads are slightly slightly longer you can just put a bit of tape on just to hold them flat um, once it's up against the wall it doesn't really matter at that stage um, and then what I would do as I say I'm going to get the um, I'm going to get the transformer, uh, bear the wires on that, do exactly the same method and uh, fix them to the beginning of the uh, system here and then just plug it into the electrics and then make sure, just go around and have a look and make sure that light's on and then I'll just do that methodically all the way through, one light at a time. Okay, and here we have the finished 
um, circuit all wired up. If I just show you the wires coming out and just soldered onto each one, it doesn't matter which wire goes on to what. Um, there's no positive and negative in the dollhouse lights. As long as one is going to one and one is going to the other, and neither of them are touching anywhere. So, and each one that I connected, I just looked round the front to see that it was working. Then I connected the next one and looked to see if it was working, and so on. So, all good, all well and good, and all working. And I've soldered the um, adapter onto the, as I said, onto the, straight onto the copper tape there. Um, instead of putting on that plastic box and then just pushing the wires into that. Um, this way you can't undo it, you can't put it away unless you keep soldering it backwards and forwards on. But the people that are owning the house, they're going to leave the house up against the wall and not keep touching it so it doesn't have to have the, the block on it. Um, and just quickly on transformers, I know I'm not sure around the rest of the world, but in the UK um, our transformers do up to 50 bulbs. Or is it 35, John Boy? Yeah, 35. Yeah, 35. They both look the same, but one only does 35 bulbs and one uh, coats with 50 bulbs. Um, never put more bulbs in than, you've, than the transformer that you've got. If you've got more than 50 bulbs um, in your house, then you would need to ha connect two transformers. Um, I mean, some, light, some houses could have 100 lights in. Um, and also do remember um, that it's not just... Um, if you have like a chandelier that's not counted as one even though it's on one wire uh, you have to count the actual bulbs so it might be a six or eight arm or 12 arm chandelier so that's 12 lights in out of the 50 um, and remember also if you plug in Christmas trees at Christmas time uh, the Christmas lights there may be a string of 12 little bulbs on that so that's another 12 going on to this so just make sure that you don't do over the amount that the transformer will do. If so, fix another transformer um, to your, your house and then you can have up to 100 lights. Um, now, put in the paper, the brick paper on the outside of the, of the building. Um, that This is what this client has chosen. Um, there are many different choices um, I, use, I can give when people are having houses done. Um, all different kinds of uh, papers, textures, uh, designs, um, different methods, what have you. So this is the, the, the one that the lady's chosen. Um, now there are, where you can see these slight dips here and here, there are windows underneath this wood. In fact, there's one, there's the front door actually there. Um, so this is laid down. I put it on in sections um, a bit at a time and then put a, a big uh, mat on it. This is quite a, hev a heavy one, actually. Um, then I put planks of uh, MDF wood on top of that, and then I put something like a heavy tool kit or something on top of that, and that's actually left overnight. So this this door is in two pieces, and I didn't have enough space or um, weight to do it all in one go. So just putting the paper on the front of the house has taken uh, two days to put on now while, I still, while I've been doing other jobs. Um, but just so people can see the kind of uh, way that I do things. Um, so this side of, has been dry, this is overnight, and uh, I will turn it over when it's finished and cut out all the windows, obviously. Um, but if I can show you, um, I'm trying to look in the count, there's the join of one of the bits of paper because it's the size of the sheet goes from there to there. Um, so I match up the joins as perfectly as possible. As you can see, I've always said that I'm very um, very fussy with my own work, um, and, and that can take a while just sliding it into place and getting it just right. Um, then I will join this bit up, make sure these bricks are all lined up as well, and put weights on this side of the, the front of the door and let that dry, and I'll get on with windows today. Um, to get the acetate cut out for the windows um, and then put all the windows together. So that's just a little insight into uh, how long it takes and the methods that I use to, to put the paper on. Okay, so uh, this is the other, the smaller side of the uh, door of the doll's house. Um, I've uh, glued the paper on, 
in two pieces, joined it where the join comes, um, and then dried it and then cut round the outside. And this bit is very rough at the moment because that's all painted. I've cut paper away around the edge of the outside of the windows and I've just painted it white roughly round um, and then the outside window frames are going to attach to that um, but let me just move that out of the way and show you what I've got underneath um, now this is uh, it was uh, long strips of uh, lead um, I'll pick up a piece here um, lead is very easy to bend and uh, move into shape it's very malleable if that's the right word if it's not forgive me <laughs> um, so uh, what I will say is uh, if you're using lead at all um, it is it can be poisonous uh, in your skin if used a lot if you rub it a lot or lick it or whatever obviously don't lick pieces of lead I don't even know why I said that um, no, that's not the done thing. Um, but if you are using lead, uh, then uh, preferably wear a thin pair of surgical gloves or something so you can still work it, but it's not touching your skin. Um, as soon as I have done this, um, I'm going straight in to wash my hands thoroughly. Um, so I can work better without gloves, but you can use it without gloves as long as you give your hands a good wash. Um, so this was uh, long, as, it, as I say, it was in one length a longer strip um, what I've done is uh, cut the scallop edge along the sides and um, I've had that the lead for a couple of weeks now and it's gone from a shiny lead color and it's actually starting to age already which is brilliant which is what I want um, so we I cut the lengths the, the right length at the top of the dormer windows and I'll bring those in in a minute to uh, put these on and you can see where I'm going with them. Um, I got a, a piece of paper and made a template for the dormer windows where they meet the roof so I knew what angle to cut these at. Um, then I glue in a piece of um, kebab skewer bags of kebab skewers are really handy and really cheap um, so and they get used a lot but it is solid wooden dowels um, so I glue the piece of wood on and then turn it over and use whatever tools necessary to push it into the, the groove to give you that, that shape there and um, then I can peel the tape off and uh, bend it over onto the uh, dormer roof and get those glued on and um, so I'll get the dormer roof in and we'll uh, we'll put these on now hopefully you can see this okay um, hopefully I've positioned the camera okay for you guys so I'm just lining that up with the top of the roof or the apex of the roof Stick that on one side and bend it down to meet the other side. Push it into place. And that looks really, really good. I'll just um move the camera and show you from a different angle okay and I've just dabbed the dowel at the end there with a tiny touch of the grey that I used on the roof there so that's a lighter colour because it's slightly damp so that will dry and disappear um, but there's the lead flashing on top of the apex roof I think it looks really good um, that's just to give the top of it a neat edge. You can see there where the join is, so I needed to put something on to cover it up. Um, if you had a, a bigger budget and you could buy a lot more lead and you could put it down these bits here, um, every house is different. Um, you can also buy um, pieces for the front of the apex as well. Um, it depends what you want, what look you want. Um, but this is... Uh, this is looking good. I'm really, really pleased with that. Hurrah! <laughs> Oi! Stop it!
Okay, uh, now I'm just uh, fitting all the windows. Uh, I've just got weights on these to hold the frames down while they glue. Um, and I've noticed when I put the door in to this kit, um, it's up quite a distance from the bottom of the door. I know it can't come down completely to the bottom of the... Well, it could come down to the bottom of the door um, if it was just cut straight down, um, but it's not. Um, so it's sort of a step up when the door's shut, um, which just looks a bit odd. Um, I've noticed it's actually the same as my boho house. Uh, when I did that. Um, I haven't ever linked one of my videos in the description box um, for you guys to to click on and watch, um, but if I can uh, do that then I'll um, link the video uh, when I put a step in the, the boho house. Um, the step that I put in that house was different from the one I'm putting in this house because the style is different. So I've uh, um, so I'm building something that suits this house um, and uh, the boho house I did something as I said very different. Um, so let's get on and uh, put this step together so we can glue it on. So okay with the uh, the doorstep, the front doorstep, um, I'm going to do it in the brickwork that, the, that I used for the house so it just blends in and looks quite modern. Um, so all I'm doing at the moment, I've got two bits of um, balsa wood here, and they're both different sizes. Because um, I don't want just one step, I want uh, uh, two steps, really. Um, and I've cut the brickwork um, more or less to size. Um, if you're gluing bits of paper on like this, making a little thing like this, um, it's always a good idea um, to have it slightly longer. Um, to start with, so you can glue it, let it dry, and then trim off the excess. Um, if you cut it exactly to size, then you've got no no wiggle room in it. So if I just place this on one end, oops, hold it round the round the front of the step. And fold it over the other side, and that's so I've so I've glued it from one side right round, and the other side there, as you can see, it's just slight, just a little bit longer. So I'll hold that on. I'll uh, keep that in place and let it dry, and then I'll do the same to the other step. Actually, I can put that there, and I can put this can on it. Just to keep it upright and flat at the moment, and then the bigger step. I'm going to do the same, same again. Actually, you could just paint the, the sides of the step if you want instead of painting, pasting the paper. And you can use any wood to do this sort of thing. Um, I'm just using balsa wood because it's not, it's not got to be really strong. It's not supporting heavy weights of anything um, and it's because it's balsa it's very lightweight so it doesn't add any weight to the overall size the overall weight of the house so put that on and then glue that round same thing keep it nice and Sharp on the corners there. And then down this side. Again, just leaving a small overhang there. It just means you can trim things like this to exact size so there's no balsa wood showing at the edges. Okay, now I can paint the, I keep saying paint because I was painting a lot earlier on, <laughs> painting windows and things, then uh, paste the glue on the top of the step and then stick the rest of the brickwork on.
Now the top bit I have cut to size because I don't want um, a lot of excess hanging over um, the edge. Um, but I have shaped it fractionally longer over the each edge, fractionally, just to cover up the the top. When you look down on top of the step, it just covers up the side of the paper where you can see a white line, and it just covers just covers over the top, so you can't see a, a white line in there from the uh, the back of the the paper cover. Oops, that one, and then this one the same. Now, <clears throat> both steps are dry, so both the component parts are dry. So I shall um, glue <laughs> or paste, not paint, some more glue on the underneath of the small step. And then I have marked it exactly where I want it to go. And before it dries, I shall measure from exactly each at yep. And then push that down and push it flat on the surface there so it's got a nice flat edge down the back there so i'll leave that to dry and then we'll stick it on uh, onto the body of the house um, evenly under the front door and put the front door in as well and then we'll see what that looks like hopefully it will make the, the bottom of the door look a lot better um, now, before I put the front doors onto the house and the dormer window roof, um, I well, I was asked in the beginning just to paint the roof grey like this, just to finish it off. And in there, there's the uh, where well, I've put the lights in the ceiling. I've got the runs from there going back, and then I've uh, taped over them and then painted over the whole thing, so it just makes it a nice uh, finish. Um, but, <laughs> me being me, um, and the use of artistic licence, I had started thinking that the front of the uh, roof, the sloping dormer part, is the um, grey slate tiles. So I started looking up on the internet, which is a great place to look, um, through images, and I found some... Uh, I actually found a red brick building, which is what this is, a red brick building with an extension on the front and a dormer roof. The dormer roof actually had the grey slate tiles. This is in real life, a real life photo. And the flat part of the extension was actually lead uh, lined. So it had the ridges in it with the, the, the lead going over. And then it just came over the front of the grey tiles. Um, just one strip, about a tile's depth, all along the front of the uh, the lead um, flashing. So that's what I'm going to do to this roof. Um, I haven't checked it with the lady, but I'm sure it's going to look ten times better than a flat grey roof. So I'm absolutely positive that she's going to love it. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm going to start by cutting um, small lengths of wood. Um, Yes, I'm going to cut these small lamb pieces of dowling. They're square, square dowling. And I've just sloped the front bit, just to give it a, an angle at the front there, to go with the front of the roof of the house. And I'm going to space them out at four inch intervals all along the top here, and then glue them down um, fast with wood glue, and make them solid. Then I'm going to get a, a special paper that I have that's already pat patterned, but I've also sprayed a silver, um, spray over areas of it to give it a sort of lead metallic look so once these are glued down then I can start laying the paper and I'll lay the paper flat and then I'll push it around the ridges of each piece of wood as I go along so let's just see how we get on with that okay my lovelies uh, house is finished yay I think it's looking really really smart um, so I'll go through it 
just quickly, just to tell you. Um, first of all, the doors, the two doors, the uh, wood over so many years. I can't remember how many years the couple have, the, have had this house or this kit, um, but the wood has uh, warped over time. So it doesn't join up completely there. It actually, it does join up, but it uh, comes out slightly just there but it's not, not a huge deal. You could actually fix a hook on the bottom of the, the, the door there um, just to pull it in a bit. I in fact did uh, put a hook in the top and I shall show you that. Um, it wasn't, uh, I'll point out the extra little bits that I've done um, just so that you know. Um, as I said, there was no fastenings for the door, but because they wouldn't stay closed um, really, you know, that well, um, I fixed a little hook to the top. Um, I'll show you from the close-up. The coin stones, um, I chose to do a uh, stone effect instead of just painting them white. So they actually feel rough, um, so they feel and look like stone. And also the um, uh, the keystones at the top of the windows. I did those in the stone effect as well. Um, I'll come up to the roof here and show you. This is the lead flashing that I uh, found on images in Google on a real house with a flat roof um, with the grey slate tiles and then the metal uh, flashing along the top and then the lead roof. I'll just bring the house down a bit so you can see, see the um, see the roof a bit better. Um, hopefully you'll agree it looks, it's come out really nice. It looks very old and very worn, just to give the house some, uh, some age basically. So there is a join in the paper um, somewhere along, um, but you can't see it unless you look extremely hard. Um, I think I joined it, it might be this one. I brought the paper all the way from this end and it I ran out here so I cut it short and I fixed it inside there so you have to look very close to actually see that it's um, joined and you wouldn't do that with naked eye I'm about an inch and a half away from the, the roof at the moment so this is the normal distance you would look at it um, but anyway hopefully you'll, you'll uh, think that that looks uh, lead-like, metallic and aged. Um, also, <clears throat> so I've added this that wasn't asked for um, and the lead flashing along the roof there that I've uh, put on as well. Um, also, as you can see, I've touched the house here and there with little um, bits of uh, moss just to give the house some age, um, just so it looks like it wasn't built yesterday. So there are just little bits here and there of, uh, of the of the moss. Um, if we come round this side as well, oh, I'll show you the side of the house. Um, if I show you in the in the room there, um, when you come down to the bathroom, I don't know how well you'll see it on camera, um, but I, I thought that was a good idea. I decided to frost the glass in the window. So although you can see in at night when the light is on, but you can't see properly um, because the glass has been frosted. Um, so that was just a little extra touch that I've put in as well. Um, so if we come to the front of the house here, I shall carefully lift this back. It's one of the houses that you have to lift the roof up first to um, to open it. But that does just sit back on itself there. And we'll bring the house up. So I don't have to bend right down to show you. There, that's better. So we've got the rooms upstairs. That's the sewing room, the top landing, uh, the main bedroom and a dressing room that you can walk around into. And it's all come out very neat, very tidy. I hope you agree. It's looking really good. And of course I've done the doors going into the uh, rooms as well from the landing um, and the other floors as you would in a, a normal house. Um, here along this top dressing here 
is where I've hidden the hook and the roof comes down over that. Um, so you just open this up and then we will open up the main rooms. Um, and also uh, what wasn't included, um, but I just decided to do, and the lady, do lady doesn't know yet until she receives the house, but all the windows on the inside, um, there was nothing in the kit to finish them off. Uh, no finishing at all. So I um, decided to cut. I've just got to touch round the joins. That's all I've got to do, but I just wanted to finish this video. But I've just got to get uh, white paint and just touch up the little joins there. Um, and I've cut tiny bits of shape wood there to finish off the uh, the windows. And then that's the bathroom window looking out. <laughs> so I thought that was quite a good idea. <laughs> Um, and the kitchen, they just wanted the floorboards loose, so they've been cut perfectly to fit. Um, so they're ready to do, be put in when they've uh, fitted their kitchen. Um, oh, here's the, the middle floor here with the stairs in the hallway. And then the child's bedroom there. Child or children. I don't know how many they have. And then here we have the lounge area. With, uh, they've all, some of the rooms have got extra sockets in so they can put table lamps in. And then there's the main hallway going up to the, the mezzanine level and then up again. So, yeah, so I thought it was a nice touch just putting the wood around the windows um, to finish those off. And the lady's going to make curtains to hang in the house as well. So the windows will look really quite lovely when they're when they're finished so there we have it folks there we are I think it's looking grand um I can't remember if I showed you on video the the finished doorstep but that's the the doorstep finished it just makes it look nicer um, than just a big jump down there uh, onto floor level so and there's some moss around there just to give it some age so There we are. I think that looks lovely. So my lovelies, thank you very, very much for watching, as always. Um, if you could click the like button, I'd be very, very grateful. And if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to, you are welcome to join our miniature family. Hurrah! It's growing bigger than bigger. Very, very exciting this is getting. Um, and also thank you um, to the lady that asked me to do this commission. And also I want to thank the people during this time of doing this video. I have had other requests um, for commissions coming in um, as people are watching and, and, and learning what I do. Um, so I want to thank you all as well. And um, and hopefully we can work things out and uh, I'll uh, be able to put you on the list um, because I already have a little list of commissions. Um, so I'm sure that will grow over time. Um, but anyway, thank you very, very much. Um, thank you for watching. Keep well and we'll speak to you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye now.